Welcome everybody. I want to explain a little bit further de the definition of a group using one more example, and this will be the integers mod five. So another way to think about this group is the rotational symmetries in the plane, so I'm not allowed to do this, of a pentagon. So I need to rotate it in the plane. And so all I can do is rotate um, 72 degrees or two, two let, let's call 72 degrees one step because I can't multiply 72 by numbers fast enough. So I could multiply one, I could multiply, <laughs> I could rotate by 72 degrees or, so let's call that one step, or I could take two steps or I could take three steps. Okay, and you get the picture or you could take four steps or five steps. Um, notice that taking three steps is no different than just taking negative two steps. Okay. That group that I just described, the planar rotations of this regular pentagon, is no different than the group I'll, I'll write down, z mod 5z under addition. And this is really addition mod or modulo Z mod 5Z is a set and its elements are just 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then addition mod 5, I add two numbers and then if I get something 5 or larger, I just take their remainder after dividing by 5. So if I add 1 and 1, I get 2. If I add 2 and 2, I get 4. If I add two and three, I get five, but that's not an element here. So I take its remainder after dividing by five and I get, and I get zero. So two plus three is zero. Three plus three is six, but I take its remainder after dividing by five and I get one. Okay, so let me illustrate this operation for you addition mod five, we draw this as a, as a table. So you list all the elements of the group on the rows and columns, okay? And then we um, combine them. And when we combine them, we put the answer here, all right? So, you know, I'll, I'll call this row sort of, I'll call all these elements um, well, let me just say um, an arbitrary entry, like this entry, will be A plus B, where A will be the indexed by the column and B will be indexed by the row. Okay. I'm trying to make the point that you need to specify which comes first, A or B. For this particular group, it actually doesn't matter. But in general, you need to say, are you putting the uh, column element first or the row element first? And here we're gonna put the um, column element first, but it actually doesn't matter. Okay, so who should go right here? That's three plus one, which is four, okay? But let's, let's keep going. Um, let's do this entire row. Um, Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. You know, three plus one is four. And four plus one is five, which after dividing by five gives me zero. The row above that is actually easier to figure out because anything plus zero just, just gives me the same thing back. So I have. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is an initial column is pretty easy to figure out because it's just 0 plus something. So I have uh, just that same column. Let me just do one more arbitrary element and then you'll see how to fill in the table. Let's look at 4 plus 3. So 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. And then you take the remainder when you divide by five and you get a leftover of two. So you now probably get the pattern that this is how the table fills up.
All right. Associativity, I won't talk too much about in this video. Um, we've already seen the binary operation visually, right? I told you how to take an element A and an element B and combine them, right? So I told you how to take two and two, add them together and get four. Let's talk about identity. Who do you think is the identity in this group? Anyone? In the chat? Is it zero? Yeah, identity is zero. And, and you, I mean, that's sort of, um, that's sort of illustrated by this row and this column, I would say. This row and this column are really exhibiting the identity because when I when I add the identity on either side, I'm not supposed to change the element, right? So in this column, I was adding zero plus various things and I just got those various things back. And in this row, I was adding various things to zero and I just got the same various things back. All right. Inverses. All right. I'll call this inverse pairs. Who's zero's inverse? Anyone? Zero? Zero, yeah. And you can see that because really this entry right here, this tells me that zero plus zero is equal to zero. Um, and the inverse of zero was supposed to be what I add to zero to get back to zero. The identity is always its own inverse. Okay, so who's um, one's inverse? What do I add to one to get zero? Four. Four, yep. So this, this zero is sort of telling me that one is paired with four. They're inverses, because when I add one to four, I get zero, and then when I add um, four to one, I get zero. So same here. This zero is telling me that one and four are, are um, inverse pairs. Okay. And then who's two paired with? Three. Three, precisely. Yeah. So this zero is telling me that two is three's inverse because two combined with three gives me zero. And this zero is telling me that three is two's inverse, same thing. Yeah, just because three plus two is five, which mod five remainder one divided by five gives me zero. So there's a good question in the chat. So in this Z mod five Z notation, this symbol is not division. That's correct. Yeah, you could think of the symbol as sort of the mod. Later in this class, we'll see where the symbol is coming from when we talk about quotient groups. So it turns out Z is a group under addition. Actually, we saw that earlier today. It turns out 5Z, the integers that are divisible by 5, like 0, 5, 10, 15, and then negative 5, negative 10, negative 15. This is, this is a group. And furthermore, 5Z is a subgroup of z, the group of integers. And furthermore, 5z is what's called a normal subgroup of the group of integers. And when you have a normal subgroup of a larger group, you can take this quotient group. So this is not division of integers. This is a quotient operation on groups. So one group quotiented out by another group. But, but for right now, think of this z mod 5z which, um, which I've changed to brown, think of that as a single symbol, okay? So think of those symbols as you can't separate them from each other, you know? 
it doesn't make sense to write, I don't know, Z mod five, you know, uh, just think of it as G, right? This is just a weird, a weird, uh, a group that has a weird name. Okay, that's, that's all how you should think of it for now. But it means the integers zero up to one less than five mod five. And, and you could do this for any integer. You could talk about Z mod 17Z or Z mod 93Z. Any public questions? Thanks so much. <laughs>